Uh, I'll never forget it. Downtown Orlando, the Land Rover dealership, because he was looking at buying a new truck, right? So I was with him that day, shooting some content. And we sat aside, he already had a Land Rover. We, we, we sat aside his truck, and that's when we had the conversation, and he gave me the option. And um, mm. it was, the thing that drove my decision wasn't really the opportunity, though, Sam. It was, it was, it, it was looking at my life from the perspective of who I was going to become as a result of the decision rather than the actual opportunity. All right, welcome back to the Everyday Saturday Podcast. Sam Crowley here with a great interview and a great guest, my buddy Luke Medeus. Let me, let me set this up a little bit. Uh, what was it? Four years ago, I met Luke. Uh, he has an amazing story. That's why I wanted to come on the show today and share that story with you. Guy grew up uh, on a dirt floor, literally in a foreign land, makes his way to the U.S., now running a uber successful business, super successful real estate guy. And Luke Medeus, welcome to the Everyday Saturday Podcast. What's brother. going on, Sam? It is a pleasure to be here with you today. It is always a pleasure, especially when we, when we get back together. Uh, Sam, you you play such a such an amazing part of my journey as well, man. I remember listening uh, years ago. I remember listening to the Everyday Saturday podcast every single day. I still listen to it to this day, and just so much help, you know, with mindset and and, and success. And so uh, you are a part of that success, Sam, and helping me get to where to, to where I've, where I've gotten uh, in my career. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. We're going to dive in. This is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be uh, Luke and I are friends. Uh, he was also a client of mine back in the day, launches podcast. We'll talk about that a little bit. But, you know, I talked about, um, man, we got, I want to pick your brain so much today, dude. I just, I just want to get right inside that cranium <laughs> of Luke's and, and really figure <laughs> out, talk about the, the inspiration, the resourcefulness that you've used to really get to where you are today. So take us back, man, where you were born, where you grew up, what, uh, what, would, uh, what that childhood look like? Well, Sam, I started, um, I was born in Haiti, right? Born in Haiti, born in third world country, little country called Haiti, uh, St. Mark specifically. And I remember growing up, um, didn't really have a whole lot. I actually came here when I was very, very young, right? So I, 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 I got the opportunity to grow up in America, right? I came here when I was three years old. Uh, my father, my parents, they found a way to get uh, myself and my other seven siblings right to America, and um, and wow. that was the best thing that ever happened because I got to grow up um, in this country, right? And so, uh, growing up, of course, didn't have a whole lot, right? You can imagine eight kids, two parents, uh, both of them uh, making less than fifty thousand dollars a year, right? You can you can only imagine. Um, we we lived a very modest lifestyle, right? I remember some some days, right? The fridge the refrigerator might not have been Full, right and things like that and so I remember yeah. that life so vivid that I remember seeing my parents I can still see it today my parents going to work day in and day out my mother working double shifts my dad getting up five o'clock in the morning to be at work by six and not getting home till five just to be able to take care of us and um and I remember thinking to myself when I was young when I was about a teenager Sam I made a decision that I have to be the one to do something different. I have to be the one to achieve a high level of success. I have to be the one that changes my entire family's uh, trajectory, mm. right? And create uh, wealth, right? And so I knew that at, at a very early age, at that time in my life, though, I thought it was gonna happen through music. So I was, I was really, really big into producing music, really, really big into making music. And um, as time went on, I went to college. I did the thing that my parents uh, told us all to do, right? I went to college the first time and uh, I went to college to become a registered nurse. My mother was a nurse. And so uh, I listened, right? I, I did it. And honestly, Sam, I would love to say that the story went the way where I got my degree, but I didn't, right? I dropped out of college mm -hmm. because it just wasn't for me. My heart wasn't there. So my mind wasn't there, you know? Um, and so I decided to go back to college a second time when I came here to uh, Orlando, Florida, which is where I am now. I decided to go back to college a second time. This time I went to college for music production. I went to Full State University. And when I did that, I actually graduated, right? And I graduated with Bachelor of Science, but something magical happened during that time, Sam. Uh, many people who know me today, right? They know me for real estate. And they're wondering, well, if you went to school for, 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 uh, for production and music, why, like, why, like, why are you doing real estate? And uh, the interesting thing about it is I never really used my degree 
uh, except for when it was time to do the podcast, which, we, you know, you and I had a conversation about that, about the intro and everything. Um, I never really utilized my degree because I got into real estate towards the end of my time at Full Sail. I got an opportunity to learn real estate and I took it. I took it. It, it, it was a pivotal, a pivotal moment in my life where I had to make a huge decision. I had a mentor at the time who had, um, he, he laid out choices. He laid a couple of options for me. He said, Luke, you're very talented with, with music. You're very talented. You know, you went to school for this. If you want to see success with this, you got to pack up your stuff, go to Atlanta, get a job, right? Get a dead end job, whatever you can, just so you can survive and then spend all the rest of your time in a studio. And eventually you'll get there. Now, now, um, 23 year old me, I don't know about you, Sam, but the word eventually kind of sounds a little too, uh, you know, not in my control, right? You know what I mean? The, it's eventual, yeah, like, yeah. okay, eventually. So uh, the other option that I had was, or I could stay here, learn learn real estate, learn the business, make some money, right? And then be able to do what I want to do later on in life. And and uh, one of the things that really helped me make that decision very quickly, Sam, was one of the classes I took at Full State University. It was, it was a class on music business. During, during that class, um, I, I got to learn exactly how much money it takes to create a pop star, how much money it takes to have a high level of success in the music industry. And I, and I thought to myself, I'm not that guy, right? I don't come from that family. I don't know anybody around me who's got that yeah. kind of money. It took Justin Bieber $4 million to make him Justin Bieber. And I'm like, I don't have $4 million lying around, right? <laughs> and so, and so, but if yeah. I do real estate, and I thought to myself, but, I, but if I do real estate, I could I could make millions of dollars because you know there's a lot of people who get into real estate investing and make millions of dollars. Uh, real estate has created many 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 millionaires, and and I have somebody who's willing to teach me. And so I just said, you know what? I'm 23. I'm young. Worst case scenario, I spend I give the next six seven years of my life to this, and then I can go back to music, go back to doing that whenever I want. And then, but I would be a different person. I I have some money. I would be a different place. I would understand business. And so that's what drove my decision to get into real estate. And um, and that and that's honestly how I got to where I am right now. I've, I've been in real estate ever since and never looked back. Yeah, that's amazing, dude. I mean, there's just, there's just so much to unpack there. It's all so good. I mean, you know, we all have decisions that we got to make that are going to change the trajectory of our life. You know, some people quit a job. Some people start a business. Some people have to fold up a business and say, Hey, it just isn't working, man. I'm going to cut my losses. Um, now you had the blessing of being at such a young age. I'm guessing that you, and I don't want to minimize this at all, but here's where I'm going with this. People making a decision at 53, it's different than making a decision at 23, for example, yeah. you know? So when you're making a decision at 23, you probably don't have the big mortgage, the couple of cars, yes. you know, wife and kids and things like that. So you're able to pivot a little more quickly, but still, man, that's a lot of wisdom to have at the age of 23 after you just got a degree to say, you know what? I just spent all this time investing in music production, audio engineer, all of that, and I'm just going to stop. And so what was it? You'd mentioned you found a mentor, yes. all right? You found somebody. How did you find that person? And what was it that they said to you specifically that got you thinking about, okay, I'm going to just say bye-bye to all of this work I just did and start following this mentor. What was like, we all remember where we were, what month it was, what yeah. season of the year it was, how it hit us. So what was said in that moment? How did you find this person? And what did they say that really got something stirred? You, inside you, you know, Seth, I, I love that question. I'm so glad you asked it because there's, there, there is so much value that's going to come out of this answer. Right. Um, for me, real estate was more of a twist of fate. It was, I considered it more of a destiny type of thing, right? Um, I, 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 got, I got into a relationship with my mentor because I was doing the things I was doing in music. So, it, so I never at any point in my life ever changed what I was doing until something else came up while I was doing what I was doing to shift my, 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 my uh, trajectory, right? And so because I was doing music, I was working in studios, I ended up working with an artist. We became really, really good friends. And then um, he ended up inviting me over to his house and at his house, that's where I met uh, my mentor, right? Because he, that, that was also his mentor in real estate. And so, but yeah. we all had this, 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 uh, this similar interest of music. We all enjoyed music. We all enjoyed producing it. So that's how we all got together, right? And I'll never forget it. Um, that, that's how my life as well. I was also doing, I had bought, I had bought like a $300 
uh, Canon T3 S camera. Uh, and, I, and my idea was I'm going to shoot some video and shoot some uh, photography in, as a way to make some extra money uh, while I was in college because I didn't have any money. Right. And so that was that was the idea. So I, so I had this talent. And I remember with the, the real estate investor, my, my friend who, who ended up uh, mentoring me uh, at the time, we, we arranged something right? we arranged something where I could help him with uh, with uh, with content creation. He was doing a lot of content, things like that online. And so I traded a gift right that I had and and, and I poured it into him and, and, and he traded the gift that he had and poured it into me. And and then, you know, we worked together in, in, in that instance. And so the what he said to me, though, it wasn't it wasn't um, the reason why this is this is profound is because even when we came together, Sam, my desire to want to just help with my camera. Again, my my goal was I want to do music. I want to do, uh, you know, a production. This camera is only here to help me make money. So when I was looking at the opportunity, I never looked at it from the opportunity from the perspective of this is an opportunity for me to learn real estate. I looked at it from the perspective of this is an opportunity for me to, to build my portfolio as, as a photographer, as a videographer, mm. and yep. even gain a client right now. So I was willing to give my gift for free right in the beginning so that I can just start to get things going with this new relationship. So I, so while I was doing camera work, you know, while I was doing photography and videography with him, we, you know, we, we go out places, we shoot some video, we shoot some photos. And while I was doing that, I remember one time he took me to a bank, right? He took me to a bank. This is my first time receiving a large check. All these stories have to do with the bank, man. I love it. They all, all the good stories got a right, bank right. involved in it. I so love he, it. He took me to a bank. He, he wanted to get a photo of him holding up a check before he deposited it into a bank. The check was for, was for over $30,000. And I remember seeing that check. I remember, I remember the whole thing, like, like it was yesterday, right? And I took the photo, and, I, and, 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 and here's the best part. Here's, here's the best part, Sam. When I took the photo, there was nothing in me emotionally that says, I need to do what he's doing. No desire. Absolutely mm. no desire mm. whatsoever. <laughs> right? and, and, I, and, and the reason why that's profound to me is because, you know, I talk to people every day about real estate now because like, I'm coaching, I'm training. And so, so many people, they get excited about this, and I was not excited about it. And the reason why is because, again, my passion, my heart was, I was already doing what I was passionate about doing at the time. But it wasn't until mm -hmm. I started I started having to edit those videos I was recording where I realized, oh, okay, this is something I should probably be doing. I, I, because I edited the videos, um, I was in a pattern, right? I, 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 a new pattern in my mind about real estate started to be formed because I was sitting down, editing videos, playing, replaying, playing, replaying, hearing what he's talking about, hearing, hearing how he's making the money. I say, you know what? This sounds like a much easier way to make money. It sounds like a much better way to make money because you can make a lot of it in a short period of time. And so I was just interested. You know what I mean? I, I, I just, I gained interest in something I wasn't yeah. interested in. And so um, I remember one day I went to him and I said, okay, Listen, um, I keep hearing you talk about this real estate thing. I keep hearing you talking about how to close deals without any money or, you know, without without using your credit and without having to risk buying the property. Like, how do you do that? Like, how do you do that? You know, how do you do that? And so um, he he that's when he gave me the option. We were we were actually uh, I'll never forget it. Downtown Orlando, the Land Rover dealership, because he was looking at buying a new truck. Right. So I was with him that day shooting some content. And we sat aside, he already had a Land Rover. We, we, we sat aside his truck and that's when we had the conversation and he gave me the option. And um, mm. it was, the thing that drove my decision wasn't really the opportunity though, Sam. It was, it, was, it, it was looking at my life from the perspective of who I was going to become as a result of the decision rather than the actual opportunity, right? I was looking more at the end game, mm. right? But I wanted so to do real estate. Yeah. I, mean, I wanted to do real estate. I was interested in it for the money, right? Let's be honest. I was interested for the money. But where my passion was yeah. was in videography and photography and producing music. That's really what I wanted to do. And so when I looked at the opportunity, I saw how it would drive me to where I wanted to go at the end of the day. And that's the reason why I said, okay, let me do this right now. Wow. That's amazing, man. And, you know, you had no previous experience and was there any limiting belief? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, we all we all have issues that stay with us from oh, our childhood. Yeah. You know, people growing up on welfare, free cheese, you know, this, the handouts, the hot lunches that are paid for at school, the hand me down clothes, all of that stays with us till we die, pretty much, because those are memories of our life. Was there any point in time where you were having a battle with the enemy in your mind oh, yeah. saying, Oh, this looks exciting, but I'm Luke Medeus, man. I I'm 
I grew up poor. I don't deserve this. Oh, man. This. Many, many, many times, Sam. Many, 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 many times. I almost didn't make it. I'll be honest with you. I almost did not make it. Um, I would like, so at that time in my life, I don't, I, I struggled with my identity. And I think many people yep. can, can relate to this, right? When you're going for something that is beyond what you can perceive, like, you know, deep down inside of you, you can do it because it's a vision you have. And, you know, you, you know, we don't have visions for nothing, right? We have visions for, for a reason because it's possible. It's a possibility. Yep. But then the, the actual act of materializing and manifesting it, you know, that's when the, 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 the other mind, the other self of you, that's, that's disempowering the other self of you that tells you what you can't do. The other self of you that, that reminds you of what you haven't done and what you, and what you tried and what didn't work that side of you, right. Um, starts to talk, you know, and, uh, that happened to me too. Yeah. That happened to me too. And, 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 and my insecurities of, of my identity, uh, one being that I was very, very introvert, you know, I, I, I didn't think that I had value to give to anybody, you know, and, and that, and, and that comes from, a, a conditioning from of my environment uh, of times where I felt that I wanted that times where I wanted to speak up and I or I did speak up and I didn't get I didn't get the response that I was expecting where I felt like you know my, my words wasn't valued. It started to I started to formulate this mindset of okay I'm not valuable or or, or my words have no meaning or have no weight and and it started to seep into my identity and so by the time I was uh, I was 23 years old my identity, I had trouble with my identity. I had a lot of trouble with being yeah. a leader. I was more of a follower. I was more of, you know, just, you know, as as long as everybody else is okay, I'm okay type of thing, right? Even if that means I got to be quiet, even yeah. if that means that there might be something in me that I should probably say, I don't say it type of deal. And and and, and when it came to actually doing real estate, which is a very, 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 uh, you know, it's, it's a sales, it's a sales job, right? You know, it's, it's it requires it a lot is. of sales. I mean, entrepreneurship in general, when you're starting your business, is going to require sales. It's going to require you to speak to clients and customers. And that was scary for me. It was, I was terrified, Sam, and to be honest, <laughs> and to be honest yeah. with you, if it yeah. wasn't for the fact that I had a really good mentor who just kept me moving, you know, just kept me putting one foot in front of the other. I think, I think that's really what, what, what helped me overcome that challenge was just willing to, to put one foot in front of the other, willing to try and try and try over again. Even if you, even if you felt like you failed, even if you felt like it didn't work out, even if the conversation didn't go the way you planned, you still pick up the phone and you call the next person, you handle the, you know, you just continue and the and once i closed that first deal which blew my mind i made over thirty one thousand dollars my first deal once i closed that first deal it's thirty one thousand dollars in your first deal you were just going to glaze over that i wasn't <laughs> going to let you do it 31 grand that's yeah. incredible go ahead i wasn't going to let you glaze just glaze over that no though. no worries and you, and you know the interesting thing sam is um it's interesting how even just a little bit of success will transform who you are it's, it's interesting how just a little bit of a confirmation of what your vision is and seeing that, oh, wow, you know what? It, it can happen for me can change not just your, 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 your outcome, but also who you I changed inside, which produced everything yeah. you see right now. Right. Um, yep. The person that was back then. Which is what? Which is what everything? What's your what's an average day like? You don't got to give us your net worth, man. We don't need to see your bank statements or anything. Uh, what level have you reached now? Because I'm talking to my buddy, uh, Luke Medeus, known Luke for a long time now. We're talking about his journey, not only to America, but through all the way through success. And when you fast forward to 2023, what are we talking about? Six-figure business, seven-figure business? Are you wholesaling real estate? Are you flipping? Are you renting? What are you doing? What's your business model now? You know, Sam, um, it's, it is a phenomenal business I have now, man. Absolutely, like, stratospheric on a whole new level. Um, uh, so I'm doing, so I, I, as you know, I started off mainly doing wholesaling. I hit the six figure mark already. I did, I did that. That was really, really cool. Um, hit, I hit seven figures when I started to change my strategies a little bit. Right. So I added on a few other strategies. I added on fixing and flipping houses. I added on buying and holding property. And so I'm doing a lot more of that now, more, more so I'm focused on, on this nowadays my legacy right uh and and, and yeah. i wear this shirt because proverbs chapter tw uh, 13 verse 22 says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children so i'm working on the part where i'm leaving it for my children's children through real estate yep. and so that's what i'm doing now uh and and and, and the magical part of the the secret sauce that really blew my business up right is honestly it it, it was bringing other people into what i'm doing once I started doing that, once I started, mm. started helping other people with 
just do what I'm doing and farming with them, it changed the entire game. It changed the entire game. And so now we are, I mean, we're, we're, we're buying more property. We're getting into developing. I just, I'm looking at a, this contract at a 13 acre property here in Orlando. We could probably build a, build about 50 properties on it. So we're looking into that right now. I mean, that's, that'll be, uh, I, if everything goes well on that, right? We, you know, if God, if God wills it and he wants it, then I'll, I'm, we're looking at an easily a seven figure deal right there. So a, a lot of great yeah. things. That's amazing, dude. That, I mean, that that's just so incredible. I mean, think about where we started this conversation about you leaving college and doing your first deal, scared out of your mind that maybe you didn't deserve it. Maybe it wasn't for you. And now you're contracting possibly a seven figure development deal. Um, you know, that's incredible, dude. I remember when we first met, um, you know, you had come, you, uh, you had booked a call with me. It came in on my calendar and it was Jean-Luc Medeus. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's a really cool name. Can't wait to meet this guy. And I remember getting on the phone and, you know, it was a call to work together one-on-one -on -one, uh, back when I did one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I remember because you're like, okay, so this is going to be a big investment. I was going to go see Tony yeah. Robbins, yeah. but... Now I'm on the call with you, and it's a decision between you and Tony Robbins. Give me a few minutes to think about it. Well, I think we we're on the call like eight minutes. It wasn't very long. It was. It was. Uh, we connected right away. I knew what you wanted. You knew what you wanted, which really made the call so simple. And then, boom! You're like, dude, I'm wiring the money tomorrow. Let's get started. And then you launched your podcast. We started creating uh, the wholesale real estate podcast. Um, and How's that going, by the way? Because we launched that four years ago. How much effort do you put into your podcast and how's that going? Amazing. Amazing. Um, Sam, mm -hmm. I just want I, I want to say this because it's coming from, from the deepest part of my heart, right? The, this, the decision to work with you and send you 25, that, that, that was the hardest thing I ever did. I, I, I just want to let everybody know right now, why are we $25,000 in cash? was the hardest thing I've ever done because I never did it before. I did a lot of real estate. I, did, I do a lot of big deals, but I never had to wire that much money on something that I was not familiar with, right? It's different when you're wiring money in real estate. And, and, so, and so for me at the time, it was, it was, it was, it was hard for me to do, but um, I just trusted you, Sam. I trusted you. I believed in, in, in everything we were doing. I believed in, 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 in what God was trying to show me, right? And I remember at that time, I even told you, Sam, I said, Sam, I don't want to speak, man. That's not, that's not what I, that's not what I'm here to do. You remember that? I remember that. <laughs> I, speaking yeah, I remember is not, that. it's not, you for me. And today I find myself speaking on, st on stages, both online and physically. And I love it. This is, this is, this is my goal in terms of, in terms of everything I'm doing with the podcast, my goal is to get on more stages this year, physically yeah. online, like anywhere that I can to just share my message. And, and that transition happened all because of getting with you. So there's a part of me who had the stage fright, the part of me who was afraid to, you know, being, being that person who would, could use their voice to change the lives of other people, you helped me change that, right? And so the investment in you, Sam, I mean, it's, 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 it's 100x ROI. I mean, it really is priceless. I'll be honest with you, it's, it's, it's priceless. You know, I can't put, a, I can't put a, a return on it because the return is greater than just money. The return that, that I got out of it was, I'm, I'm impacting the lives of other people who now can uh, get into the industry of real estate and change their lives financially and change their lives forever. So what 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 we did together, what you did for me is is it's it's uh, it's bleeding into the lives of other people through me and helping them be able to uh, achieve financial freedom as well. So there's there's really no I can't put a price on. It. I wish you know if, if that makes sense. I really cannot put a price on it. You've imp you've impacted my life. A tre a tremendously and the decision to work with you was the best decision i ever made we got our our by the way by the way for 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 my analytical people right um the return that we got monetarily it would have been what six months i think i made my money back 20, over 25k in six months less than six months so the twenty five thousand yeah. dollars i invested six months later got it right back first year did over 100k next year did another 100k um, just last year contracted over a quarter million and just coaching. Right. And so, I mean, this is, wow. So you, now you're, you've earned over a quarter million dollars in your coaching program just yeah. last year. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Uh, uh, yeah. 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 That's awesome. So it's, it, it, it worked and really well. so here's the thing about that. 
here's the thing about that. And I look, I receive all of that and I appreciate you saying it. Um, here's the thing about that. If you're unwilling to invest in yourself at a high level, look, pricing is just a mechanism to get people to pay attention. Okay. So you could easily charge 2,500, but you're not going to get the same quality client. You're not going to get somebody to pay attention. You wired 25 grand. You weren't getting it back. That's a no refund transaction. Yeah. So either you're going to show up and you're going to do the work and you're going to be open to being coached because we all knew what you wanted. You wanted 100% clarity on your message. You want to get this podcast off the ground. I know you didn't want to speak, but I figured he'll, he'll, he'll start to, he'll start to drink the Kool-Aid eventually. Don't worry. We'll get him, we'll get him on stages. Uh, and you wanted to yeah. transform, you know, you wanted, like you talked about, you wanted to be a better version of yourself. And really it's all about the process at that time. So when we started working together, it became obvious to me within just a few weeks, wow, this guy's going to be a rock star, man. I don't even think you knew the potential that you had. The fact that you sold a quarter million dollars last year in your own coaching doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, that that's just like, that's, that's a no brainer, but if you're unwilling, here's where I was going with that. If you're unwilling to invest in yourself, then when you go to ask other people to invest, there's going to be an internal struggle that you have because you weren't willing to do it on your end at a high level. So how can you possibly ask somebody else to do it at a high yes. level? Because you've poured into yourself, and I'm sure I'm not the only coach and mentor you've had in the past five years, because you've made the decision to pour into yourself. When you ask other people to do the same, it's like, boom, it's a no break. It's so powerful because now it's congruent with what you believe in your mind. You Absolutely. I mean? and, and that's 100% that's fact. Sam, you 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 were the first uh, mentor that that I had hired at that level, and the interesting thing about it is, once I did that with you, it was easier for me to do that with 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 future mentors, right? I invested in other mentors, yep. absolutely, um, and but it was it was a whole lot easier for me to do that after after doing that, and also asking for the money, like like just you know, I come from um, the person I was when I was younger was the person I would do everything for free, even though the value behind it was immense because I, because again, my yeah. identity, right. I didn't believe I was worth charging. And so yeah. investing in yourself in this way is so, so valuable because it helped me, it helped me get to a point in my life where I'm like, okay, you know, I've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars and hundreds of thousands of dollars into my education. I deserve to get paid um, something right. That's reasonable. So yeah, it, it, it builds up that courage. So I, I, yeah, a hundred percent, one hundred percent. So what is wholesaling real estate for just the layman? You know, just the person they've never. It's the first time they're hearing that term, or maybe they've seen it advertised somewhere. Can you kind of talk to us like we're five years old on just the basic? This is how I know you. I know you as the wholesale real estate king. All right. <laughs> so when we just when we look at that one component of your portfolio, can you just speak to what is it that is whole real real estate absolutely wholesale. absolutely well um the way i like to explain it is, is like this right so when we go when you go to uh publix or kroger right and you buy a mango from mexico publix paid for the inventory and then they mark up the price to sell it to you but you don't have to go to mexico and get that mango that's yep. wholesaling <laughs> except with houses right so what we do as wholesalers is we go out and we find good properties good mangoes right and then we take it, we put it on a contract. The difference between Publix and us is that we don't have to, we don't actually buy the mango. We put a contract on a mango and then we sell the piece of paper for that mango to, to an investor that wants to buy that mango, right? So I'm going to sell it to you for a piece of paper. So I spent absolutely no money, but I'm making the, the, the margin in between. And, and that's the, right. the shortest version I, I can explain what wholesaling is like. And it's very, very simple, very simple. And the benefit to the investor is you went and found that property. They didn't Absolutely. find it. Absolutely. And they they know they're paying a commission to you and they don't mind paying that. Like they could have said, Well, you only got this for fifty grand. Why are you selling it me to eighty? Well, because the spread, they're gonna flip it or rent it out or whatever. Let's say they buy it for you from eighty grand. You made thirty grand. Here's here's the real success mindset as I see it. Nobody's concerned how much money you get paid as long as there's profit in it for them. Yeah. Some people would be like Wait a minute! You only paid fifty. I I got the contract. Hey, that's fine. I'll just give it to the next guy or girl. It doesn't matter. But if they can sell it for one twenty, they've made forty. They happily pay you the thirty. You absolutely. I mean? Like there's a bun. It's it, it's an abundance mindset. Ab absolutely, one thousand percent. Uh, you know, there's the, in, in the beginning, in the beginning with with hosting real estate, it was all just about uh, 
making some money, right? But 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 once I got really good at it, I started to realize what my actual risk, uh, my actual job was as a wholesaler, and it's and it's to make sure that the investor makes money. As long as the investor makes money, whatever I can negotiate on on the, on the purchase price is all mine. And so and and they and they and they never care because they're getting a great return on their on their money. So that absolutely a thousand percent well said. Yeah. So there's the one part of it, you doing it. Now, what about your students? Your student uh, comes into your course, comes into your coaching program. They know nothing about wholesaling. What's the, uh, what's the likelihood or if, if they do the work and they pay attention and they follow you, how quickly can they see their first job oh, yeah. like you got when you first get did a wholesale? 190 program? days, 190 days. You know, you know, Sam, that was my experience, right? 90 days and I closed my first deal. Uh, however, I, I have I have a handful of students that have done their first deal in 30 days. I mean, I'm getting they're blowing me out the water. I got students blowing wow. me out the water, right? The 30 days, I've, I've got one student, Taylor, right? She's just one example. T Taylor, she's uh she was 20, 22 at the time when we got started, very, very young. And um, she closed her first deal in 30 days and she made over twenty one thousand dollars on her first deal. She knew nothing about real estate at all. Right. <laughs> so she's just yeah. she's just one example. Another person that that did uh, something similar to that, uh, that was Brandon. Brandon closed two deals in 30 days, made 28K and he had lost his job right before he started working together. I I remember I was on the phone with him and, and he was like, Luke, I don't know. I don't know. If, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little scared to do it. I just lost my job. Um, you know, this is, I don't, you know, this is all I really have. Uh, but I know I want to invest in myself. I know I want to be an entrepreneur. I know I want to be. And so he, he, he took it. He took, he, he, he took a leap of faith. Right. And it turned into yep. $28,000, which he got his ROI back times, times 10. Right. Um, and yeah. because he's still closing deals now, he's still in the business. I mean, they all are. And so it's an endless amount of, uh, of return that you get for something like this. And so, uh, most people, I see them do it in, in 90 days. If anyone that I've seen do it for longer than that, I'll be honest with you, they, they're they not going hard enough. You know, I'll, I'll be 100% honest with you. But with all of my students who, yeah. who go hard, they put all their all in, they got the right mindset, they got the right heart. Um, they all do it in, in under 30 days and they, and they get phenomenal results. The, uh, does the economy play a part in how good or bad your results are, or your students' results? Meaning, you know, here in Ohio, uh, just until recently, especially in the COVID years, there was no inventory. I mean, houses were going 12 offers with no yeah. inspections, which is, I've never seen it before in my 25 years in Cincinnati. Does that play a part in your business? Yes, it at all? does. Yes, it does. And, I, and the reason why I'm, small, I'm smiling so much right now, Sam, is because it's during those times, that's when our value as wholesalers go up. When it's, you know, it's, Ooh, it's, how it's so? supply and demand, right? Basic economics. Supply and demand, when, when there's a lot of supply to demand, uh, when there's more supply than there, than there is demand, right? the prices of things drop. When there is uh, less supply and more demand, the price of things rise. At the same time, if it's hard for you to find something, but I can find it easy, my value in your eyes just went up. Because if you have a goal of, of acquiring 10 investment houses this year, and you can't find any homes, but I'm finding all the homes, you're gonna pay me whatever my price tag is to do that. Spoken like a true boss, man. <laughs> Spoken like a true boss. So how is it still easy for you to find homes when supply is low? Yeah, yeah. So with, with wholesaling, um, I like to think of wholesaling more of like a, the ability to find properties off market. So we're looking off market, right? So when I look at, when I look at uh, deals, I'm not looking on, on the MLS. I'm not looking, you know, I'm not working with an agent to find my deals. What I'm doing is, is I'm actually getting into the, into the market. I'm getting into other community and I'm finding homeowners who have a desire to sell and I'm talking to them directly one-on-one -on -one and working out, uh, negotiating a good price, negotiating some good terms, and then finding that 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 win-win situation with them. And that's how I'm finding my, 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 my real estate deals. And because I'm finding it that way, um, I'm finding opportunities that other people aren't able to find because they, they didn't put on a, they didn't put on the market. You know, they didn't get to that point yet where yep. it's 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 there for the entire world to see. They're or they're 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 at that point where they have their house and a guy, you know, somebody like me reaches out, says I'm interested in selling. We were, you know, we end up talking because they have interest in because they have an interest in selling and we end up working out a, a good price. And so it doesn't matter what the economic um 
situation is, what, what the climate of the economy is, because there's always somebody who's looking to sell a house. There's always somebody who's looking to buy a house. The thing is, how are you positioned, depending upon how the, the economy is doing, to be able to fill the need, right? And that's why we're still able to make money wholesaling real estate, regardless of whatever market we're in. It's a recession proof strategy because it's all about positioning. During during a, a a high market like what we just experienced, like what you were like what you were mentioning in Cincinnati, we, we felt the same thing here in Orlando. During a high market like that, right, um, the market is in the hands of the sellers. And because of that, because of that, prices are going sky skyrocketing really, really high. Um, and a, you know, a, a lot of buyers in the market as well. And the difference between that type of that type of climate versus the other kind of climate, which is the climate that we're walking into, where it's more of a buyer's market, right? Where where sellers are having trouble selling their properties, they're not selling as quickly, they're selling for, for less money. Out of the market that we're in, there's always an investor that needs that, that wants to buy a house. There's always a seller that's in mm. a situation that wants to sell quickly. I just need to know how to position myself and pivot properly depending upon what market I'm in and I'm going to make money. You know, listen to you talk, dude. This is, this is so much fun for me to have this conversation. Cause remember when you, part of your coaching program was coming to Cincinnati, yes. Ohio. And so you were here for a couple of days. We hung out, we went to my office, we worked on your podcast, your messaging, your course, all of that good stuff. Then we went out for a couple of drinks and I don't yeah. know if you remember this, but we were on a patio at a restaurant here. It was uh, the summer of 2019 and you had got a message in from somebody. I think your call to action on, yes. on your podcast was, you know, make sure you reach out for one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is what I basically train everybody to do. Use the podcast as your virtual stage. Like this is an opportunity for you to educate, to entertain, and make an offer. Make an offer on your podcast. Get them to book a call. So you had somebody and you're like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? Let's call them. We were right there. We had our drinks at the table and we were out on the patio and you called that individual dude and landed a sale right yes. then and there at like six o'clock at night over drinks on a patio your first coaching sale i was like wow even i was just like cheering you on first of all i knew it was totally possible you always i mean strike when the iron's yeah. hot but that was the power of you gaining that clarity on your message and i think over and above everything your confidence level was through the roof because now you saw that it was real. Now you saw that you had something that somebody would absolutely pay for. And I remember talking to you over the next few months, coaching sales were coming in like boom, yes. boom, boom, boom. And you're raising your price. I think your first deal was a fraction of what you probably charge now, which is normal. Everybody starts out at a lower rate until you realize this is amazing. I mean, I know I'm offering way more than this is than what people are paying me. So I'm going to raise my prices, but do you remember that? Do you remember that time on the patio? Here yes, I do. I actually still have the picture that we took um, while we were on that patio. Beautiful. I still have the photo. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. And your confidence shot through the yes, roof, man. Yes, yes. And, and you know that that, that just goes back to uh, that comment a little earlier during our conversation. You know, just a little. All you need is just that one first moment of success that just blows everything up for you. And that happened for me. That happened for me. And, and honestly, I want to thank you again for helping me through that because because hey, I mean, I'm sure you remember I was. Uh, at first, I was like, "Damn, I don't even know. Like, what do I do?" Like, and, it, and it's, it's something so simple. Like today, it's so simple. Like, it's like, okay. Wait, 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 oh wait, yeah, wait, yeah. Wait, but back right? then, with yeah, but at, but at that time, I was just like, I was palms were sweaty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, palms are sweaty. Mom's spaghetti. Right. I mean, it was. Uh, <laughs> It was something it was something to sit there and watch. And I remember just being a great time because I knew when you left Cincinnati, dude, you were just gonna go and just absolutely crush it. And here you are. You've got your wholesaling business, you've got your real estate portfolio. When you said development, I'm like, wow, that's a whole nother level, man. Like that's getting yourself into a whole nother level. You're growing and growing and growing. There's not one time we've talked in the last five years where I ever got a sense that you were just settling or plateauing. You're speaking on stages in Vegas now. I mean, dude. You wanted nothing to do with public speaking, and then I see a flyer of you as one of the headliners speaking at an event in Vegas. I mean, that's got to just blow your mind when you see yourself in a flyer or a promotion like that. Yes, yeah. yes. It, it is absolutely mind-blowing. It's absolutely mind-blowing, especially knowing, you know, where I come from. Like, it wasn't, yep. like, statistically, it wasn't supposed to happen for me. It was not supposed to happen for yep. me. And so that, that, that alone is humbling. Um, I, I put honestly, I, I give all the glory to God that I, that that if everything has happened, uh, I feel like He wanted to do more with me than I, even I thought I could even see. And He and so He brought me people yeah. like yourself, Sam, and you and you know you're a believer as well. And yep. Um, yep. 
just the right relationships at the right time with the right amount of courage can change your life forever. The right relationships, the right time, and the right amount of courage. Um, that I love that. I love that so much because you're right. It, look, you can live in faith, uh, which is the thought of something really good happening, positive happening. You can live in fear, which is the thought of something bad happening. Both are giving energy to something that has not yet happened, that may not happen, but they both can't occupy your mind at the same time. You've got to live in faith or you're going to live in fear. And sadly, a lot of people live in fear because of what we talked about earlier in this episode is you don't know my past. You don't know my story. You know, you don't know where I come from. I'm not supposed to have this, but a guy like you shows up on the radar absolutely should not have been blessed to this level. But because of that courage and that commitment and the timing, not waiting for everything to be perfect, you know, in your business, you can't wait. Like you see a deal come on the market or you got a seller who's interested. You got to You really have to have the uh, ability to make decisions yes. quickly and have faith that it's going to work yeah. out. Because not everyone does work out, but if you don't take a shot 100% of the time, 0% is going to work out for you. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. And I, and, and I think the hardest part in anything that's, uh, that's a little scary, right, where, where, where there might be a little bit of fear is having that faith, right? Because we're, you know, it's, it's yep. easy for us to get so caught up in the whether or not the, out, the favor, out, favorable outcome will actually happen that we will tiptoe around it rather than just jumping straight into it. And I, and, and I think uh, for me, Sam, what has helped me a whole lot, cause I, I still have those moments today, you know, I mean, you, you can imagine my first development deal, 50, 50 properties. I mean, this is, this is big, yeah. right? So even for me, I'm looking at this empty lot where I see nothing and I'm like, okay, I don't know. Should I really be doing this right now? I mean, should I just sit right and know? No, 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 no. Um, I just, I, I honestly, I prayed on it. I prayed to God about it. I said, God, listen, um, if this is, if this is what you really want me to do, I know, I know it's all your will at the end of the day. If this, if this is really what you want me to do, I'm going to do it. I'll figure it out as, as I go, because I know that the plan is not mine, it's yours. And just, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it's interesting, so just good. since we're talking about mindset, let's, let's, let's talk about the programming real quick of, of most people's mindset. Society has, has programmed us, right, to rely on other people. And so the interesting thing about that is, when things don't go our way, what do most people do? They blame it on somebody else, right? And so what, what I yep. find interesting about that way of handling um, uh, overwhel overwhelming or, you know, just really big opportunities is I put the blame on God. I say, okay, listen, this is this is for you to figure out. I'm going to walk it, but I'm going to let you handle it out, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> so, and, and he's all yeah. powerful. So, you know, if he wants it to happen, it's going to happen. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And I'm, and I'm completely okay with it either way it goes because I know it's his plan and not mine. So... That's how I handle that. And, and that, that works phenomenally. That's such a mature faith to have, though. It's not easy to have. It requires, you know, faith that's never been tested can't be trusted. So if you're not out there testing your faith regularly, you can never trust it because now you're doing development deals, which is probably equivalent to you launching your podcast four years yes. ago or speaking or doing a course. It, it's a different level and it's scary as all get out, man. And it can paralyze you in fear. But you go to the Lord for discernment and you have faith and you've also have experience now because if you never take a shot luke you got no experience to draw from and they're not all going to be negative experiences the ones that didn't work out you're going to have some really big wins in there that you draw from that started out as you being completely fearful didn't know the outcome had no idea and that ended up being a huge win that's why you always try because it's impossible to fail every single time. It can't happen. It's impossible. It will not happen. If, you're, if your heart's in the right spot and you're doing the work and you're dialed into what your message is, you will not fail every single time. So let's say three out of 10 times, you know, you're a multimillionaire playing Major League Baseball, batting 300, yeah. you know, three out of 10 times. And what we do doesn't sound so sexy. You only need three out Absolutely. of 10. You know, that's enough to make a six figure Absolutely. income. That's enough to get the wins under your belt. That's enough to give you the experience that you need that to draw from. So the next time you got to make a big decision, you have to draw from something. It can't always be, well, I didn't take that shot. Well, I didn't take that shot. You know yeah. what I mean? So Everything that you've talked about so far is lockstep and barrel with uh, the Everyday Saturday message. That's why I wanted to have you on the show. That's why it's always so powerful to hear your story about where you came from and all the challenges that you overcame. So as we wrap up, this is the video podcast. I probably should have mentioned that right out of the gate for people listening on iTunes and Spotify and other audio platforms. But as we wrap up the video podcast, give people an opportunity if they wanted to learn more from you, find out more about you, any type of, you know, 
area they can go to online where they can kind of figure out more if this is something they want to do. If real estate, they're thinking, you know what? I think Luke makes a lot of great points. I've been thinking about this real estate game for a while. Where can people get a hold of you? Absolutely, Luke? absolutely. So I'm very, very active online. Very active online. Uh, the best place to go to to get access to everything that I have to offer, even even my social media links, is uh, is to go to sowcontent.com. That is s o w c o n t ent.com and uh, you, you'll be able to find everything that i'm doing uh right on that page uh on instagram i'm on instagram i'm on facebook uh i dab a little bit on twitter right and uh you can find me at, at luke madeus l-u-c-m-a-d-e-u-s as, as, as a matter of fact sam um i think this is a great opportunity uh but, but if there's anyone who is really really interested and learning how to get started hosting real estate, just learning how to break into the real estate in industry. Over the years, I have mastered what what you know my my, my craft. I've mastered what uh, how how to be able to close deals really really quickly, how to find those really really good deals, and I've created a lot of millionaire investors because of it. And so, what what I'd love to do is uh, I'm having a a uh, a five day challenge coming up very soon here. And if anyone is interested in uh, in learning, rather than having to pay thousands of dollars, and I, right now, Sam, my, my highest one on one coaching is now 100k for a year. Instead of doing all of that, they could just you know just come on down to the to the uh, online workshop. It's it's literally only like 97 bucks, right? But you can learn how to make thousands of dollars, six figures, just wholesaling real estate and passing a piece of paper from one hand to another. And so I'm having that very, very soon. Just go to sowcontent.com and I will see you there if you uh, feel like this is for you. 100K for one-on-one -on -one coaching. And just think, I could have got you for under three grand back in the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> And now look at you, dude. I, I am so proud. I, I, I'm a huge fan. You know that, man. And, uh, you know, we're friends. Whenever I'm in Orlando, I always text Luke, say, hey, man, come on over where I'm staying. Let's hang out by the pool. Let's... Uh, Let's chat it up a little bit. You can you can just gauge the energy from this guy. You know, you just know when you know. When you talk to somebody, their heart's in the right spot. He really does want to help. If you have an interest in exploring real estate, go to SOW, which I'm guessing is an acronym for school yes. of wholesaling. I thought you right. S S S O which was the name of the podcast we came up with back in the day. That's still crushing it on iTunes. Uh S O W content.com. Yes, I got sir. that right? All right, we'll put a link in the description on the YouTube channel as well. So if you want to connect with Luke, I know you drew a ton of inspiration from his message and his story and just, I mean, how the guy just uh, shows up every single day. So Luke, thanks uh, for being on the show today. It's always great to catch up with you, man. And uh, we will be in touch. Absolutely. All right? Pleasure's all mine. Uh, thank you so much and God bless you. Let's do it, baby. Let's have the best day ever. Yeah. Hey, hey, another podcast episode in the book. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, a couple things. Number one, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss a future episode. Number two, can you like the video? It helps all that algorithm juice get going. We're looking for amazing people like you. And when you like the video, it helps us out. And here's the last thing and the most important thing. Everybody has a story to share and a lesson to teach, and that means you. Get that message out there, all right? And make every day a Saturday. I'll see you on the next episode.